This is one of Taiwan's endemic species of bird, the Mikado pheasants, photographed deep in the forests of central Taiwan in the spring of 1991. About 100 years ago, a British explorer collecting specimens on Alishan happened to notice two long black pheasant's tail feathers on an aboriginal headdress. These two long tail feathers alerted the world's ornithologists to the existence of the Mikado pheasant. In 1912, the first live Mikado pheasant was sent from Taiwan to Europe, where this large, handsome bird immediately captured people's hearts. A detailed physical description of the Mikado pheasant was published in the authoritative ornithological journal the Ibis, in a section devoted to Formosan ornithology. The Mikado pheasant's powerful feet scratching for food, together with the colorful Mikado pheasant nesting in the forest, are magnificent portents from the turn of the century of Taiwan's entry onto the world stage. Thanks to the Mikado pheasant, Taiwan became a household name in Europe people began to ask where Taiwan was and why it was home to such a beautiful large bird. Taiwan is unique among nations along the Tropic of Cancer. If we travel round the globe at this latitude, we can see that those areas through which the Tropic of Cancer passes, such as the deserts of Mexico, the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Desert, the arid uplands of northern India and the Brahmaputra River, are almost entirely desert, or poor, infertile land. Taiwan is the one exception, being an island covered with extensive green forests. Every summer, low-pressure systems from the Pacific bring powerful typhoons and torrential rainstorms to Taiwan. But these also bring Taiwan the benefit of 90 billion cubic meters of rainwater. Although most of this rainfall runs off, it provides adequate nourishment for the forests within Taiwan's 36,000 square kilometers. Where there are forests, there is life. Without forests, there is nothing. Taiwan's green forests make a refreshing contrast with the gray deserts of other regions along the Tropic of Cancer. There are some 9,000 species of birds worldwide, and in mainland China, an area 260 times larger than Taiwan, there are over 1,200 species. Yet the small island of Taiwan alone is home to over 400 species of birds, making it a rich gene pool for birds of the world. Although travelers to Formosa in the last century had no idea of these statistics, they directly experienced the charm of being accompanied by chirruping birdsong wherever they went, whether up in the mountains or down by the sea. These experienced travelers were often surprised to meet familiar winter migrants on the seashores of Taiwan. But what really caused them unforgettable delight were the 85 species and subspecies that are endemic to Taiwan. In 1871, Dr. George McKay, a Canadian missionary, walked from north to south through Taiwan's low-altitude farmland. Everywhere he went, he saw cattle egrets wheeling over and alighting on the brilliant green paddy fields. This common sight of Taiwanese rural life is still a childhood memory shared by many people today. On Taiwan's farmsteads, typically surrounded by bamboo clumps, Tree sparrows flit about and hop to and fro, 
filling the air with their non-stop chirping. This children's song concerns a bird called the black drongo, a common sight among the hillside settlements of Taiwan's Hakka community. People enjoy watching black drongos bobbing their tails as they go in search of food in small groups of four or five. Experiences noted down by Dr. McKay in his travel journal of a hundred years ago still form part of the everyday scene in rural Taiwan today. Amid undergrowth ablaze with morning glory, the oriental skylark begins his song on the ground, then ascends straight up into the sky, pouring forth a stream of notes. This is the most naturally sweet song to be heard in the Taiwan countryside. The Chinese bulbul witnessed the early development of southwestern Taiwan. At dawn, the Chinese bulbul's resonant but tuneless warble regularly accompanies early risers setting off to work. The Stian's bulbul is related to the Chinese bulbul and is a bird of similar habits. Stian's bulbul looks much the same, apart from having a completely black head. It enjoys perching in the large-leafed banyan tree picking at the ripe sweet figs. Only recently have ornithologists discovered that the Stian's bulbul and the Chinese bulbul live on the plains of eastern and western Taiwan respectively, divided by the central range. They never mix, forming a unique geographical type among the birds of Taiwan. At its broadest point, Taiwan is only 140 kilometers wide. But down the center of the island runs a range of mountains up to three or 4,000 meters high. The precipitous drop from mountains to the coast results in short, fast-flowing rivers scattered with boulders of every size. These make the perfect habitat for river birds to feed. In the mid-19th century, Robert Swinhoe, the British ornithologist who first investigated species of birds endemic to Taiwan, certainly appreciated the attractions Taiwan's rivers held for birds. As he followed the Laonung River upstream towards Mount Morrison, he observed brown dippers freely coming and going along the stream, and saw them as very much an integral part of the entire leisurely sea. Here, the small but high-spirited plumiest water red start rhythmically moves its slightly elongated tail up and down. We still have no satisfactory explanation as to what this behavior represents. The brilliantly colored common kingfisher is for many people a vivid memory of childhood days spent by the riverside. Another is the Formosan whistling thrush, with its call resembling the squeak of a bicycle's brake, and its body suffused all over with a dark blue sheen. Fertile lowlands and urban areas only account for one-third of Taiwan's land area. The remaining two-thirds consists of mountains covered with broadleaf and coniferous forests. Most of Taiwan's bird species are to be found between 700 meters 
and 2,000 meters above sea level. The maroon oriole is an indicator bird of this roosting zone, preferring to perch on tall branches. Bamboos, the narrow-leafed trema, and the large-leafed banyan are often frequented by the maroon oriole. It comes and goes quietly, rarely uttering a sound, and rarely fluttering its wings. But in broadleaf forests, all other birds follow behind the maroon oriole in beginning the day's activity. A flight of gray-throated minivers looks like red and yellow leaves being blown by a gust of wind from one tree to another. In charming contrast to the bright red of the male bird, female gray-throated minivers have bright yellow plumage. With its iridescent black-blue plumage, the bronzed drongo generally appears alongside flocks of gray-throated minivers. Among those birds active in the forest canopy, the most famous in Taiwan history book is the Formosan blue magpie celebrated in local gazetteer literature as the long-tailed maiden of the mountains. During the Qing Dynasty, a poet described the Formosan blue magpie in the following verse couplet. With its brilliant blue plumage and long sash-like tail, it drifts over the earth like a beauty in gorgeous attire. During the breeding season, when parents are rearing their chicks, other members of the group will also come and help in feeding the young birds. When strolling in the broadleaf forest, you can often hear a series of calls like the rapid beats that accompany sutra recitation in a temple. This is the Muller's Barbet, with its multicolored plumage so evocative of the tropics. Like the woodpecker, it likes to make holes in tree trunks and build its nest. The competitive warbling of the white-eared sibia often makes for unforgettable memories of evenings deep in the forest. Despite its small size, the green-backed tit often behaves like a bird of prey, gripping the prey with its tiny feet to peck at it. Surely anyone who has seen the rufous-bellied blue flycatcher pass like a streak of yellow will find it hard to forget nature's vivid colors. When Taiwan's most beautiful winter tree, the cherry tree, is in blossom, 
Mountain hikers are often delighted to discover the Formosan Yuhina hanging from its branches like an acrobat as it sips nectar from the flowers. With its yellow breast and green back, the Chinese white eye flitting among the peach red cherry blossoms brings a first touch of spring warmth to the winter scene. Among the undergrowth in broadleaf forests are found wild birds which like to stay low down searching for insects or small seeds. Strangely enough, the appearance and direction of flight of the lesser scimitar babbler affects the life of the Bunong tribe of Taiwan Aborigines. Hunters of the Bunong tribe foretell their day's luck by the lesser scimitar babbler's behavior. The gray-eyed nun babbler is another bird which the Bunong tribe use to divine the intentions of their gods. On a small forest path, the bamboo partridge nervously pecks up palm grass seeds, constantly emitting its call of jigoguai, jigoguai, this bird is much sought after by hunters for its fine tasting flesh. And curiously enough, the loud cries it makes when frightened by any human encounter tends to give its whereabouts away. The steer's babbler, known in Taiwanese as the sweet potato bird, likes to feed on the ground and even builds its nest in low thickets. This species, which is endemic to Taiwan, is named after Professor Joseph Beale Steer of the University of Michigan in the United States, who penetrated deep into the mountains of central Taiwan and first recorded it in 1873. The steer's babbler is an indicator bird for the boundary between medium and high elevations in Taiwan. Once you find it, look up above and you will see temperate coniferous forest spreading out among the mountains at an elevation of 2,000 meters. During the 1930s, the Japanese ethnologist Dr. Tadano Kano penetrated into these extensive coniferous forests to explore their flora and fauna, geology and geography. He described his impression of these forests by saying that Taiwan's high elevation environment is a miracle of nature. Indeed, there is hardly anywhere else in the world like Taiwan where such enormous variety is crammed into such a small area. Tropical, subtropical, temperate, and frigid zones exist side by side, so that by climbing to different elevations, you can experience spring, summer, autumn, and winter all in one day. This is the environment that nurtures so many precious and endemic species and subspecies.
Near mountain hikers' huts, the venacious rose finch often advances fearlessly to beg for food from humans. The male bird has gorgeously red plumage, completely different from the plain female. The solitary fluting cry of the Formosan laughing thrush echoes again and again down the mountain valleys. The Beaven's bullfinch often perches in solitude on the tops of fir trees. It forms a natural contrast with the Johnstone's bush robin, which energetically expresses itself and calls at you repeatedly. The Formosan bar wing is shy and retiring. The quick movements of the fire crest as it weaves rapidly through the forest in search of food lend a charming touch to the stillness of the mountains. According to the famous Ming Dynasty herbal Materia Medica, the pheasant derives its Chinese name from the way it flies as straight as an arrow before finally dropping. Even earlier, the Jin Dynasty lexicographer Guo Pu mentions the sea pheasant, which is like a pheasant but black and lives in the mountains over the sea. It is said that the phrase, the mountains over the sea, is a reference to Taiwan and that the sea pheasant is the mysterious ground-roosting Mikado pheasant of Taiwan's mountains. Today, the Mikado pheasant still remains a bird species of enormous interest for many naturalists. Its ancestry corresponds to that of bird species of the eastern Himalayas, and among the coniferous forests and Yushan cane groves on the highest mountain peaks of the central range, the female bird softly calls to her young to peck insects and the seeds of wild plants. The male Mikado pheasant struts like a lonely monarch, soundlessly emerging between cliff sides and winding forest paths. If you happen to encounter him at first light or in the thin mist of evening, it's a fantastic piece of luck. Another large bird of the pheasant family, which is a species endemic to Taiwan, is the Swinho's blue pheasant, whose movements are so discreet 
that no one has yet succeeded in filming it in the wild. For thousands of years, generations of people have never ceased to admire the beauty and freedom of birds. The mellifluous quality of birdsong, their variegated plumage, and their agile quick movements mean that birds can give human beings an eternally fresh experience of communion with nature, a sense of wonder constantly renewed. But we still know little about many birds which are so close to our own lives. For example, as for the Mikado pheasants and the 15 other bird species that are endemic to Taiwan, our understanding of them has increased only marginally in the past hundred years or so. We cannot even completely fathom the mysteries of Taiwan's forests, which nurture all this wealth of bird life. No one understands why such a small island as this contains such a luxuriant growth of verdant forests. How these giant forest trees came to grow to such an advanced age is also beyond our understanding. Even as we wander among these forest giants and hear the crisp notes of flocks of birds calling to one another, perhaps we will never be able to fully comprehend the meaning behind this blending of nature's silence and her noises. But we can sense the pleasure of this togetherness, coexistence, dependency, and belonging with nature. To learn to value this pleasure is perhaps the very message Taiwan's wild birds have been urging upon us all this century, with their non-stop chorus of plaintive warbling and merry chirruping. <laughs>